Hey, it's Jim, and this is level three of the CFA program, a constructed response set on the topic of private markets pathway and the learning module on private equity. The CFA Institute is very quick to point out in this learning module that of all of the private market investments, private equity makes up the overwhelming majority. So that sounds like a clear signal to me that you ought to be prepared for a handful of uh, cases in this area. Notice the key action word in this learning outcome statement is calculate. We're going to do a bunch of calculations in here. So let's get started on the case. We've got Tech Vantage Partners manages three funds and their committee is evaluating two potential investments. So we're going to have this Cloud Secure and the Data Flow Systems Lots of good details in these two tables, but I want you to look down at the bottom here. There's a target multiple down there, and there's an industry multiple uh, at the bottom of the second table. So we need to go back to uh, what we learned in level one. Remember when we did all the multiple stuff and we were trying to do valuation, and so we used a multiple, we multiplied, right? A multiple, we multiplied it by something to get some kind of evaluation. Well, we're going to use that same technique here. The math is actually fairly straightforward. But what we need to make sure is that we pick the correct kinds of input variables that, that are relevant and ignore those that are irrelevant. So let's quickly go through some of this cloud secure information that we have. So this is a pure venture capital investment. So current valuation $8 million, uh, or being asked to put up $2 million for 20% ownership stake, $1 million in revenue. And here's the key thing. So 100% annually for three years, then 50% afterwards. Now, of course, in all of this, you know, kind of private market stuff, we're always looking for some kind of an exit strategy. So we're probably going to have to use some regular old time value of money stuff with those two growth rates. So profitability, 15% at the exit, five years. So this is going to be a strategic sale. And there's the multiple down at the bottom, 10 times. So we're going to have to multiply that somewhere in, the, in one of these calculations. How about the second possible investment, data flow systems? So we currently have valuation at 100 million or asked for $30 million, which will give us a 25% ownership stake. There's our current profitability, growth projections. Now this is important here, current debt. So there's 10 million there, timeline of four years. And then there's another multiple 12 times. And then we have a third uh, possibility as well. Uh, so what are we doing here? Detail memo regarding a potential public to private transaction. Nova Industries uh, has been identified as a potential take private candidate. Now we believe that we can acquire this at its current market price without paying a control premium. Now remember, we learned this back in level one and level two, that when you're on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, that the average takeover premium is somewhere around 50%. So the Institute and the academic world calls this a, calls this a control premium, but because the market volatility and the company pretty much has stunk over the last several years, so we believe we can get it at its current market price. All right, there's the due diligence. Remember going back to level one, we've got the code and the, you know, the, uh, the standards and somewhere in the standards it says something like, you know, we owe it to the profession to make sure that we work hard. So here we go, due diligence report several key findings. There's, uh, there's another multiple five and a half times. Uh, there's another one seven to eight times uh, profitability, which stands at around uh, 150 million. Okay, here's a capital structure kind of an issue here, 70% debt, 30% equity, uh, no interim distributions. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. Let's say 6% annual profitability growth, five-year holding period. That's an important, important sentence here. The plan includes repaying 30% of the initial debt during this period. And then at exit, there's yet, there's yet another multiple. So before we get to the questions, just think about what you learned 
all the way going back to the simple, you know, like a PE ratio, we just multiply that by something to get some kind of a value. I did warn you that we're going to have to calculate. So notice the first action word in all four questions is in fact to calculate. And we have, you know, several different opportunities here. So the first one, there's the cloud secure, the expected exit value. Question two is uh, calculate value and IRR in the data flow systems. And then question three, we need the Nova. So let's do the purchase price. And then question four, we'll piggyback that to uh, some kind of an inclusion of that capital structure conversation that we just had. So do you need your calculators for all this stuff? All right, so let's go ahead and calculate the expected exit value for that first investment possibility cloud secure. So current revenues, $1 million. So what we need to do is figure out what those revenues are going to be at exit, which is the end of year five. So there's our regular old time value of money. So notice what we're doing. We're just using the equation one plus the decimal form of the interest rate. So if you do 1 million times one plus 100%, you get two. Compound that out to three, you get 8 million. And then compound the 8 million at the 50% growth rate. There's the one plus uh, one plus 50%. So we go from the 1 million today all the way out to 18 million at the end of year five. Now, you can use your financial calculator. Of course, you could just make 1 million present value. You can uh, do the periods of three, right? Payment is zero, zero, solve for future value. Oh, you need, don't forget the 100% interest rate in there. So either way, you're still gonna get the $18 million. So that exit value will go back to that multiple. There's the exit multiple we were given. So let's just go ahead and multiply 10 times that that future value. Remember, the exit value is just nothing more than a future value. So that gets us, what, 180 million. And we were promised, let me just go back here quickly. We were promised, there we go, ownership stake 20%. So multiply that by the 20% and we get 36 million. Question two, calculate the expected value of data flow systems at exit and the implied internal rate of return. That's gonna be a fun one. So let's just do some time value of money stuff. Notice we have one plus the growth rate there. We were given that in, the, in that second table. Uh, current profitability was eight. So that gets us out to uh, 30.73 million. And once again, you can use your five time value of money buttons to get that 30.73. And then all we're gonna do is take that 30.73 and multiply it by the multiple that we were given back in that second table, which was 12. So we get 300 and what is that about $370 million. Now, of course, you might think that that's the end. But remember, I said, hey, we need to make sure we worry about that the debt in there. So that net debt was 10. So make sure you take out the net debt of, of 10 to get down to about 360 million. Second part of this question then is to go ahead and compute the internal rate of return. <clears throat> and um, let me just quickly point out the math to you at the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is nothing more than an F over P minus one. That future value is about 90 divided by that 30 million and then raise it to the one fourth minus one. Now you of course can do this with your five time value of money buttons, or you can actually use the IRR function. So a couple of different ways you can get to that 31.49%, but let's go ahead and find out what those inputs are. All right, so what did that second table tell us? $30 million for a 25% ownership. So what we're gonna do is take that 358, we just computed that 358 right there, multiply that by our ownership percentage, and that gets us the proceeds at exit, right? That's uh, about the $90 million. So 90 million is future value, 30 million is present value. Now, if you're using your time value of money buttons, do I have to remind you, make sure that you make one of those negative. It's always best to make present value negative because sometimes you have to make present value negative. And then you uh, make sure you do payment is zero and then four is N and solve for uh, 
I, or you can use the internal rate of return function, or you can just use, and I always teach my students, whenever you can do an F over P minus one, it's always the, uh, it's always the easiest thing to do. But remember, when you do an F over P minus one, you have to chop it into its, uh, into its four year period. So you raise it to the 0.25. Let's go ahead and compute this purchase price. Sometimes it's called enterprise value uh, and the required rate of return. Uh, we're given this current profitability of 150 million. We're given that multiple. So all we need to do is take the 150 times the five and a half. That gets us uh, 825. And then we need to chop it, right? So this is again what I said earlier about capital structure and the need to make certain that you're worried about what goes on at the top right of the balance sheet. How much of this is financed with debt? So uh, what did we just do back here? 825. So let's chop that into 70%, chop it into 30%, and you get 577 and 240, 247. So that um, required equity investment to 247. Let's move on to the final question about calculate that enterprise value and equity value in five years. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're given some of this information from the previous slides. Uh, we put it together on this slide. So let's go ahead and just start with a couple of steps. So the first thing we need to do is compound that profitability all the way out to five years. So we're given the 6%, so 150 times 1.06 raised to the fifth power. Feel free to use your financial calculator again. So that gets you about 200 million. And then we were given that um, multiple seven and a half. So that gets us out to, what is that number? About 1,500. Let's go ahead and once again, chop that 1,500 into its duly proportions. So there's the debt repayment of 30% of that. So that gets us 173. So let's subtract that out of, uh, out of that 577. So that gets us down to 404 and where were we so there's the 1500 so we're going to take out take out that uh that debt payment and so that gets us what is that about 1100 dollars um at exit and that was pretty quick slide deck takes us through uh this learning outcome statement so hey thanks for watching and good luck studying